Hi, welcome back to another edition of Inside Great Lakes Sailing. My name is Greg Norman, your host. Well, I think we've got uh, the biggest uh, show so far of the summer. We had a, certainly a great time last week with Bob Hughes out on uh, Lake Michigan with Heartbreaker. And to uh, reward that, we're going to check in with John Hewn, who is the owner of Katana, which is a brand new GL52 in, in the fleet. They won the first uh, race, uh, first leg of the race in the fleet. The Big Red Regatta from Makatawa Bay Yacht Club. We're going to get a chance to talk to him. He's a St. Louis-based uh, equity manager, longtime sailor, University of Illinois graduate. We're going to spend some time talking about uh, the co coming season and uh, all that's involved in that. We also want to mention that Bob Hughes was named the GL52 Sailor of the Year for 2023 and uh, certainly a well-deserving honor. So we'll get a chance to talk to him later in the season. As you're aware, we were out on his boat last week. And we'll certainly keep uh, up to speed with what's going on with the GL52 fleet. We moved back to Detroit uh, this past week. We're getting a chance to spend some time with uh, all the guys that got involved in Bayview's One Design Race, sponsored by Holly Hansen, the Sailing Regatta. Uh, we got to talk to some of the locals, both the folks that are involved in the race. I think you'll enjoy that. We didn't get out a uh, whole lot out on the water, but we had some good interviews. And I think you'll uh, enjoy that part of the show. We caught up with some uh, old familiar faces. I think it'll be uh, it'll be pretty interesting. We're doing the show on Tuesday, and uh, we just wanted to mention that next week will be a whole hour on the Mills race. We're bringing Reliance, our boat, down uh, Thursday to enjoy uh, the race. We want to thank all those folks involved in that race. We'll get the uh, inside scoop and hopefully a whole bunch of uh, video, including maybe some of the new uh, Gordy Howe Bridge. Look, going under that sometime. We're going to take off early Thursday morning. Try to make it down to North Cape. Dwayne Burgoyne, one of our regulars on the show, will be he's nice, nice enough to be hosting us Thursday night. We'll be racing to the island and uh, having some fun with it. We'll also get to catch another chance to catch up with uh, Trey Sheehan, who will be on later in this show, who with uh, Stellar Crow beat won the uh, Tartan 10 um, fleet in the uh, one race, the uh, Bayview one design race. I think that'll be uh, fun to watch. So we're going to spend some time on uh, Putin Bay, taking out West, uh, Western Lake Erie. And that'll be, I think, uh, a pretty interesting show. So we'll bring you a lot of interviews from that. But uh, let's start off with uh, John Hewn. John will be up in a second talking a little bit about the Great Lakes fleet. We look forward to uh, talking with him. Welcome back. We're talking with John Hewn, who is the owner and operator of the GL52 Katana. And uh, you guys were lucky enough to be, uh, win the first big red regatta outside on Lake Michigan uh, this past weekend. It, you are brand new to the series. You are certainly brand new to the Lake Michigan area, not as a sailor, but they're still in the boat. And uh, you guys were first out of the gate, first race. So congratulations, and maybe talk briefly about the race. Yeah, great, great start to the season, obviously, for us. We're very excited about it. Uh, we got a great boat and a great crew uh, that came together, and the team really gelled. We had a practice session a couple of weeks ago and worked out some of the kinks and, and the bugs. Um I obviously am the uh, the weak link. A uh, lot to learn for me on this boat, but uh, a lot of the crew has been sailing uh, TP52s for many, many years, including uh, our tactician, Morgan Larson. So uh, Pete uh, Balash, who uh, put our boat together, um, very experienced guy going back into the America's Cup and then uh, helped get this one in tip top shape. So we came out of the gate, not really sure what to expect, but uh, we ended up having a a good first race, which uh, took a lot of pressure off. That's that's for sure. You know, medium to light air, so nothing to to worry about too much. Uh, but we were really happy with the results. The name Katana obviously brings up samurai in in, in its reference. So maybe explain why that's important to you, because this is your third boat, I believe, your third boat named Sam uh, same uh, Katina Katana. Katana, yeah, Katana is this is the third Katana boat. So uh, coming up with a boat name is always hard. So I figure out once you have a good one, we just keep it. But uh, the katana is the sword of the samurai, and the samurai believes that in battle, he becomes one with his sword. And so uh, we kind of joke that the, the crew and the boat becomes one in battle. So uh, uh, this, this time, it certainly worked out. You know, it's got the boat itself has got some pretty good bones. The boat was the former platoon, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. That's right. And that was last year's uh, 52 Super Series winner in the Mediterranean. That's right. So you you got yourself a pretty good used car, so to speak. Yeah, no no doubt. Uh, Harm was kind enough to agree to sell this boat as he had committed to build a new boat that he has now done. And uh, that was before they won both the championship and the Super Series. So thank goodness he allowed me to 
keep going on the plan. And uh, we, we bought it uh, in the fall and brought it over. I uh, got here uh, in the midst of winter. So Pete did a lot of work over the winter to get it ready uh, to go this spring. And I recently had a friend that had a Cal 25 that was all beat up and he wanted to paint it up. And then he told me the price of what he spent on the paint for a Cal 25. I'm not going to ask you what it cost to paint that boat, but I was shocked for a Cal 25. It was like 15 grand. So I, I won't even get into the dollars to paint that boat, yeah. but it was certainly uh, an expensive proposition. Yeah, some of the guys were teasing me uh, over the winter. There's, of course, a lot of checks to write to get a boat ready for the season and redone. And and uh, so it's a lot easier to write those checks when you're having a good time on the water as well. So I feel a lot better today. You're a University of Illinois guy that learned to sail on some of those uh, Southern Illinois lakes, even though you're from St. Louis, where you're sitting now, you're uh, involved in the uh, equity business. So obviously you've been very successful. Why the 52s? I know you you sailed your whole life. Yeah. Why the 52s and what attracted you to, to this fleet? Obviously one of the better fleets in the world. Yeah, well, certainly uh, growing up here in Southern Illinois, if we wanted to go have real competition, we went to the Great Lakes. And so spend a lot of time racing up in the Great Lakes all the way back to the 80s. Uh, and uh, so have fond, uh, fond memories of it. So uh, my kids are out of the house and uh, was looking for a new hobby and wanted to get back into sailing. So uh, went up last year and, and saw the, the 52 class in action. And it really reminded me of my, my years racing lightnings where we would travel all over the country uh, racing lightnings. And you go out on the water and race hard and, and uh, compete. And then afterwards, hang out, have a, have a beer and a barbecue and uh, good camaraderie as well. And I really found that in the Great Lakes 52 class. Um, wonderful people who started that class, uh, Doug DeVos on down and uh, a great, a great uh, you know, kind of atmosphere and so uh, couldn't turn it down and had this opportunity to jump in. And so, so far, so good. We had a chance to watch you a week ago Wednesday, actually a week ago today, uh, in a practice round. We were out on the back of uh, Bob Hughes's boat. He was nice enough to buy, come out. We did a, a, a show last week. It wasn't for a couple of grinders. I'd still be in Lake Michigan. We made a couple of turns. I don't think it's, it's, it's hard to explain to somebody who hasn't been on that boat just the power and if you remember last Wednesday, it was probably in the high teens, low twenties in terms of being, you know, blowing. Yeah. If you're, the, if you're on the back of the boat, you know, it's it's the worst possible position, especially for an old guy like me. I was just shocked at how professional the crews are. That that's that goes without saying. But those are real beasts. Those are. I'm almost sure they should be racing these these 52s in the America's Cup. Because it yeah, they are. It's one hell of a machine. That's for sure. You know, I. Uh... I've got the attitude, you know, I've sailed everything from, you know, small boats all the way up to Santa Cruz 70s. And I figured, oh, this is just another boat. I'll figure it out. And once I got my hands on it, very quickly understood that I needed professionals to help run that boat. I, I couldn't, you know, put the mainsail on uh, alone without understanding the locks and the straps and, you know, the loads and, and all those types of things. So it was great to have a you know phenomenal crew that was very experienced, but they are a beast of a boat for sure. I'm sure you were aware of the quality of this of this fleet, but once you got in it, were you surprised at all? Uh, I'm always surprised at the quality of sailors out there. You know, it's a pretty small community, and these guys really know what they're doing. And it, it's also nice that not only uh, does the group get together, many of the, the crew members travel the world sailing on different circuits with different boats, but know each other. So a lot of camaraderie there also. But yeah, the, the quality of the teams in the Great Lakes are, are definitely going up and continue to do uh, do that. But there's also, uh, you know, a um, a fleet of boats that are, you know, a little bit more budget minded and uh, have a Corinthian uh, circuit as well. So it's good to see everything from, you know, the local club racer all the way up to, you know, a full pro team being able to sail together. A lot of fun. If you look at some of the early 2005, six and seven Botine 52s, and then look at some of the recent ones, they really are different. They're, they're certainly different in design and they keep getting slicker and they keep becoming more Ferrari and Lamborghini like in their, in their designs for sure. Yeah, that's right. Some of the newer boats are uh, wider in the stern and, you know, certainly are, are optimized a, a bit more, but uh, you know, in the, in the case of the 52s, the older boats were a little bit more slender, especially in the, in the transom. And in the light waters in, in the Great Lakes, that's sometimes a good setup to have. And, and in fact, um, Usual Suspects, that uh, is an older boat, won the Mac race last year, um, you know, with that thinner waterline. 
You guys were buoy racing this past week. You get to the open water. Platoon has had a great record. Now that obviously Katana, but Platoon had a great record in uh, in offshore in, in the Mediterranean. They they wiped up in the last two or three years. Yeah, a couple of weeks from now we uh, do the Queen's Cup, and that's a good uh, start up uh, or practice for the the Mac race that comes in mid July. So we'll be doing both of those and hopefully have uh, good results as well. John, it's really nice to see you part of the fleet. I think you certainly had such a great uh, opportunity to win. And then certainly um, everything I've heard, uh, you're a first class guy. So appreciate your time. We will hopefully see you on the, you know, the podium in the next few weeks. And uh, we'll keep, uh, I'll keep abreast of what's going on with the GL52 fleet. So appreciate so much taking the time to talk to us from St. Louis. Great. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate you reaching out. Thanks for having us. I wanted to mention the Crescent Sail Yacht Club Regatta. One design will be held uh, June 14th and 15th. You can still sign up for that. So if you get a couple of seconds, make sure you take some time out to uh, look at yacht scoring and maybe uh, be a part of it. The, the Bayview One Design race was phenomenal. And Crescents won't be any less. We hope you will uh, jump on board and uh, stay tuned for uh, all that goes on with that race. And hopefully uh, some, spend some time with us here at, uh, on the show. We're talking with Sarah Renz from Sailing World Magazine. We're here at Bayview for the obvious uh, Sailing World Regatta Series. The first question is a really simple one. Um, I'm amazed at the sort of train that came into town, the blitz that you guys provided. It's, it's really unique and, and really, it's, I'm sure that's by design. Well, hopefully professional. Absolutely. And welcome and friendly. But yes, I think we have an amazing media team. We do five big events a year. 250 boats each event. This is our first time in Detroit since, for 14 years, we started our first event in 1993. So we're thrilled to be back, and we're thrilled to work with all of the yacht clubs in the area to build this event up. Now there are six events over the summer, but two back-to-back, -back, Chicago, Detroit. The second stop on that's gotta be tough because there's not a lot of break in between. You provide that same opportunity What's what's the best and what's the hardest for you as, a, as part of Sailing World? Well, it's our first time doing back to back, yeah. so we start in February and go through October. And I think the energy is going to be amazing going because you can see what we build on social media, right? And so I think it's just con going to continue to build through Chicago, and then a month later we go to Marblehead, Massachusetts. The thing that hit me was that. It's, it's sort of, it's, it's everywhere. You, no matter where you looked on any social platform, it was part of that process. And it was fun stuff I wanted to watch. That's great. It wasn't um, typical TikTok stuff. It was other skippers talking about their boats. It was conversations where there was an all-female crew in one case. It was really insightful stuff, and I think that's done on purpose. So Dave Reed and I are both sailors, right? So we come to this series as sailors and what we would want. So yeah. we want a great party. We want our friends and family to come to the party. So we want it to be inclusive. We also want any boat, whether it's a J24, uh, a J35, a T10, uh, SC70 that we have here, anyone can participate. So I think that's the biggest thing is we just want to be super inclusive. And the good part is next week you get to go home and sleep in your own bed. I do. I'm excited for Chicago. It was our first event with the nude regatta, as we all call it. Right. Um, so we're thrilled to be back there again. We're lucky. Does this? I don't want to say this breathes life into the old, what essentially was the Bay, Bayview One design, mm -hmm. but it really has. And I mean, I'm just I'm seeing what people walk around with. The Holly Hansen tent by itself is 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 something that spends five seconds with. It's really pretty amazing. I think we're lucky we have great sponsors, right? They see the value. We're a media company. We have amazing social media that hits all demographics, right? So you've got YouTube, you have, we're not really TikTok, but we do have Instagram and Facebook. So we're trying to hit everybody as we go. And I think that is key to engaging people and getting them excited about it. So coming in as an outsider, our loyalties are to everybody. 
Cool. Thanks so much for your yep. time. Get a chance to talk to our favorite uh, Cleveland guy, Trey Sheehan, yeah. probably one of the best sailors in the Midwest, certainly. No, 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 Standing no. in front of the hooligan, I'm going to kind of paint over this for a second. You guys were uh, the Tartan 10 winners today. Yep. And uh, let's talk Even about the racing. scroll. Just a nut once in a while, right? Well, I don't know that I buy that, but uh, explain to me a little bit. Obviously, you've got a much better crew than you do a skipper, and I understand That's that part. That's absolutely the truth. Um, no question When you've got it. guys like Curtis on board, yep. they, they yep. save your... Yep, yep. But we honestly, had Curtis take the weekend off this weekend, and we had two fabulous fill-ins. So Curtis is going to be vying for a spot next week. Okay. Uh, Brad Boston brought his, brought his kits down, uh, 13 and 11, and they were terrific. Okay. So Curtis has been put on notice. And if your last name is Boston, you better be a good sailor. Much like if your last name is Chicago, you better be able to sing. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly okay. right. You got it. Talk a little bit about the race. We had a ball. Uh, it's been three days of... Uh, Mixing it up with old friends, we got back here and uh, kind of shake the dust off of the Tartan Ten. And it's been uh, we had a big winter. Did a little bit of sailing, did a little bit of uh, traveling. Got the Tartan Ten out, and um, it's always a riot just getting it back and having a having a ball with it. What do you like about the boat? I love it because uh, it's 40 plus years old. The design is 1976 or thereabouts, and they're still just as uh, appropriate to sail in any conditions. You know, we had some good weather. We had, you know, a little bit of light on the first day and they delayed us at the dock. And uh, yesterday was perfect tartan 10 stuff. There's one guy I want to ask this question. I've never asked anybody. We even had an interview with Charlie Enright this week and I want, I want to ask this question. Where does the line for competitive and social meet? In this know, In this sport. Social's all about it for me. I don't give a shit okay. about that. I mean, I, I'm joking, but. The competition, thank you. The competition is terrific, but if uh, we're not having fun, there's no reason for this. Okay, you're a jovial kind of guy, yeah, right. but my, here's my right. question. You're also a killer competitively. Right. So is it a, the, the, the smile a little bit of a mask, honestly? Uh, no, no. I, I Honestly, okay. we'd still be doing this if, uh, right. if it was... Uh, Every time you get on a boat, there's going to be a race. Somebody's going to be pushing to do something, and we have a ball with it. I, I don't, I don't know that, I don't know that it's a mask. I mean, all these guys are Fair absolutely enough. fierce competitors. Every okay. Time. And and we love, we love John with each other at night. Last night we kept everybody out, and you know, hopefully we uh, put a little hurting on them in the bar, and uh, we'll see. It's, you know, it's one of those. I ask a little less professional question yeah. with you because we've obviously yeah. had some, we have yeah, a relationship yeah, yeah. we've had for some time. Sure, sure. So I guess I'm, we always have those conversations, yeah. and it, you know it is what it is. Absolutely. But this boat is—I uh, know it's 40 years old, but it, it's obviously in, in the best possible shape. She is well cared for. She's uh, gotten a lot of attention. Uh, my son Griffin and Curtis took the boat completely apart with a friend uh, from here, Dave Schreiner, uh, came in and he uh, took everything out of the boat. And we had to rebuild it entirely and. You know, it's at that point yeah. where you learn how to do electronics and rewire the boat and get real uh, accustomed to doing a whole bunch of fun stuff that, you know, you can, you probably don't want to do that with a car, but with a boat, you can tear everything apart and start all over again. We had a ball with it. Mills so, race uh, next weekend? Next weekend. We're bringing uh, the big hooligans coming down. Uh, Ziggy is up in Port Huron with the boat, and we've got the winter crew because we're going to do uh, two, three long distance races and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get the band back together from our SORC stuff for the winter. Okay, maybe later in the summer after we get through some Hope of the so. GL stuff, we'll come back yeah. and we'll spend a couple yeah. days with you guys. Love to see you. It'll Thanks. Riot. Appreciate your time. Yep. Congratulations. Thanks. So you gotta explain to me what this thing is. You gotta explain to me what this <laughs> you thing know, is. Everybody's got a little twist, right? And uh, we'll so you're in the leather? No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the ball gag, the whole routine, you know. <laughs> little little sadomasochism in the whole program. No, right. we'll keep this for the. Back. How would we not have bought this when we saw it? You had to have it. I don't disagree. You had to have it. All right. Yeah. We're visiting with Jenny Dolan, who is the marketing manager for Holly Hansen, yeah. and. You're here with Bayview's uh, Haley Hansen Sailing World Regatta. There are six stops. I'm really impressed with the, just all the, the promotion that you guys have done while you're in town. And I, th I think that uh, is something really cool. Does this kind of an event certainly help the company? I guess that's what I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah, so we love attending regattas like this. We get a good cross-section from people who this is the first regatta they do ever, or the first one of the season, all the way up to America's Cup Sailors and Olympians. 
Um, we like to have a full store here. It's nice to see what you know our customers are looking for, getting their feedback. Definitely helps for branding. Salem World does a great job promoting the series at the five stops in the U.S. and the BBI Championship. So yeah, we're very excited. Very excited to be back here in Detroit. Um, this is where I grew up. Um, so this is my home club, and it's nice to be home. You're a local girl. Yes. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Gross Point South. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you have a regional event, we've got Chicago next weekend. You're going to put six together all, all, all total. Mm -hmm. Are they different marketplaces and different kinds of programs, or is it pretty much the same kind of program? Um, pretty much the same type of program. Uh, you, of course, we tweak stuff for each market, um, especially with our assortment for what we bring at the shop. We kind of know what Chicago likes versus St. Pete. Obviously, each club is a little different, and you get to learn that landscape. Um, you know, St. Petersburg, we had the largest regatta of the season and huge party. I mean, seven to 800 people, um, lots of dancing. So that was always fun. And it's just, it's a great atmosphere. Holly Hansen is also a complete line of, of, of goods, mm -hmm. winter, summer, all kinds of processes. So what's, what's the hot thing right now? Correct. Um, definitely sun protection. Sun protection is big for everyone, especially sailors out on the water. So we like to focus on that. We use a lot of recycled materials. We actually use recycled coffee grounds in one of our sun protection pieces. We also do, Hallie's known for rainwear. So, you know, Hallie Hansen invented the first rain jacket back in 1877. So we create a full line of that. The hardest part of this kind of an event and that's the most fun of this kind of event. The hardest part is um, being here first and being here last. Okay. So um, they're long days, but they're super rewarding, and you just try to make it look seamless to get our booth open. And with Chicago and Detroit back to back, this is a long couple of weeks. Is that fair? It's yeah, very fair. Uh, lots of planning goes into this, so we book the assortment a year in advance, and then we you know ship it from Seattle where our warehouse is. It's an amazing event you guys are putting on, so that's pretty cool. Well, thank you. Appreciate no. it. I want to thank Haley Hansen's Jenny Dolan for uh, spending some time and talking with us, and I wanted to show the blooper. It's just a quick one. Uh, she was the first interview this past week uh, during the Haley Hansen One Design Bayview race. And uh, I want to point out that your mouth doesn't always work. And this was one of those times. And I appreciate her patience. But it's always fun to see the underside of what we do. And hopefully this will make you laugh. Mm -hmm. We're talking briefly with uh, Jenny Dolan, who is the Haley Hansen Marketing Manager in Sailing. Yep. Let me get that over. We're talking with uh, Jenny. Sailing Marketing Manager. Haley Hansen Sailing Marketing Manager. Say that. Jenny Dodlin. Dodlin. Yep. We're talking with Jenny Dodlin, who is the Hallie Hansen's sailing manager for all the promotions. Correct. And those kinds of things. You're kind of the person involved. I don't want to say that either. <laughs> We're talking with Jenny Dodlin from Hallie. Jesus, my mouth's not working. All right, shake it up. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I got this. We're briefly talking with Kent Colpart, who is on Trident, USA 45, Santa Cruz 70. Yes. You were nice enough, and I'm going to kind of pan this a little bit to all the kids that you took out as part of a, a, a process. We're here, obviously, for the Haley Hansen uh, one, one Design Regatta. What was the idea of taking the kids out? Actually, I was approached by Haley Hansen. Uh, Jennifer, uh, Jenny Dodlin from Haley Hansen uh, asked us if we were using the boat this weekend. I said no. And she suggested us that we go ahead and bring in a junior team. She sponsored, uh, sponsored the whole team. Uh, she got uh, gear for the kids. Uh, it was a really good experience for them. You're a former Commodore here at Bayview, so you obviously know the, the mark pretty well. Um, one of the things in talking with David Reed and talking to Sarah Renz and certainly talking with Jenny, I was shocked at sort of coming in as a, this giant steam train. They, they've really done a great job with the publicity of this race. Oh, they do. They have that nailed down. Yeah, that's for sure. Every step of it, everything is, is, uh, is planned, and they do a great job with their media. Does this become one of the more premier, premier events, you think, in, uh, in the sailing world in the Detroit area? And I say that based on the fact, obviously, you've got the 100th Mac coming up, so it doesn't doesn't shadow that. No. But the reality to it is this is kind of an event that can really sort of spark what used to be the BOD. Sure. Is that fair? No, it, it is. I mean, it's a great race, and they do a great job in their marketing. Now, you know, and I know Dave well and, and Jenny well from, from Sailing World and from Ellie Hansen, and, and they do a spectacular job with whatever they do. Right? Uh, we, happened to, we, were, uh, we won the new regatta in 2007 on Burden. We were the overall winners, and we got sent to the Caribbean. And that's where I met Dave, because he was down there. Uh, so he's a great guy. And, uh, that's part of this event, right? And so uh, I know he's glad to be back here. And I'm glad to see them back here. Charitable opportunity. It's kind of cool taking that up, you know, to do the, the kind of things you're doing. It's uh, what's been the most fun. 
I mean, doing things like this, uh, the community outreach that we do, uh, this boat is owned by uh, me and a partner for the Trek Charter Company, and we're going to have some other vessels in town in the future. But uh, a part of our community outreach program is that we uh, have uh, some of the like, more kids on boats programs, and uh, they do yacht club, and Trek Yacht Club of all, and we have uh, more kids on the boat. We have a big boat program that we operate, and the big boat program teaches kids but more about the big boats, and not necessarily just about being on one. Shows them how to operate the head properly on a boat. Uh, teaches them how to check in the diesel motor, check the fluids, check the oil, check the strainer. Tell them how to turn on the batteries. Things they're not going to have on their Opti or on their Laser 420. Why is Santa Cruz 70 and this was now Trident? And just give us the history real quick. Well, uh, Santa Cruz 70s we felt would be the best program for events like this. You know, this is, uh, we're going to be doing our race charters. And I think that I can say uh, right now that Mark Hollerbach is, and his family are going to be the first ones to charter a Trident for the Hunter of Mackinac. And we look forward to that. Mark was our tactician this weekend. And uh, he didn't realize how well the boat has been maintained. Uh, the boat sat in the barn for five years, so everyone thought you know, it was questionable, but it came out in great shape. Uh, the previous owner did do a very good job. We really haven't had to do much for it. Uh, we'll have to buy some sails and maybe update some instruments. As you guys are out today on the race, for the, the, we're obviously here for the Holly Hansen One Design race. Kids on sailboats, obviously as your hat points out, talk a little bit about the race today. Um, it was good. We got to all rotate through positions. I think a kid got a roll that was not called rail meat on every leg. It was a great experience. We got to learn stuff from more knowledgeable people, and it was overall really fun. What's it like being on a Santa Cruz 70? Amazing. I have zero complaints. <laughs> now you want to buy one, right? Yeah. Okay. Thoughts? Um, I thought it was a really cool experiencing like a bigger boat and like seeing how everyone like worked. Each person had like a different job. We all got to like pitch in and help them. Young lady, is it genius that you put more than one friend so you have kids on sailboats, not a kid on a sailboat? Does that make sense to you? Why? It's what? It's funner. It's funner. Okay. That makes sense. No, but is it, is it also part of the pre premise that, that they came up with with the program? Is it also feeding you well? Is it also part of the process? Do you eat well? Yeah. Obviously, we don't know how to open mayonnaise. We use that on the... On the, on the but we, we did a pretty good job. Single best part of the day is what? When I got to trim spin, that was my highlight. Okay. Uh, Um's not a word. <laughs> we'll come back to you. Um, I think just being on the boat, learning new stuff. Thank you, guys. We're here at Bayview with uh, part of the Holly Hansen uh, Sailing Regatta, here the, the bot race, so to speak, one design. We run into Brett Langos, who's part of the Kids on Sailboats program out of Cleveland, and uh, your daughter's sailing, right? Yeah, my daughter's on the Santa Cruz 70 with Detroit Charter Company and the junior uh, race team, and they are having quite an experience out there. Let's talk a little bit about the program that uh, we interviewed you, I think, two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. And it's nothing but grown. Nothing but grown. We're just, we're trying to be the source that connects kids to the sport of sailing. We're not going to compete with junior sailing programs. We're going to help junior sailing programs get to big boats, get to keel boats, and just find a way and create opportunities for those kids to have the opportunity to sail. It's an obvious question, and the thing that we talked about two years ago was making sure that a there's a partner on the boat because mm -hmm. no kid's going to walk up and down and walk you know with a bunch of old folks like us, <laughs> and make sure you feed them. Yeah. That's such a simple concept, and we talked about that the last time. It's apparently working pretty well because they're carrying it over in other places. They are. They are. I saw the, there was a lot of snacks and ice on the boat, and everybody was happy. I mean, this is supposed to be a fun experience, and a lot of skippers are, are trying to create those opportunities. We're partnering across the U.S. now. Hey, I've got this. Help me get these kids on the board. And, you know, you got somebody like Kent and Detroit Charter and Helly Hansen coming together and saying, let's get eight kids on a Santa Cruz 70. These yeah. kids hopefully are going to sail the rest of their lives after this. It's a whole nother animal when they get a boat that size. And you've had some success yeah. in Lake Erie with your own boat yeah, racing. Yeah, yeah. we got the mills next week. And we had, uh, we're had we coming down for that, by the way. Oh, yeah. We're doing a whole documentary. There's four of us that all turned 70 within about a month of the mills race. In fact, I'm racing on my birthday. Ah. So we're looking forward to the mills race. Who are you um, racing with? My boat, and okay. we're bringing in uh, my old day thirty down. Yeah, nice. So we're going to be dead. We're going to be dead last in um, whatever essentially the cruising class is. <laughs> But it's an experience that nobody really sees the experience from the first guy out. No. Everything's always, you know, we last week we're on the TP-52s, the, the Great Lake 52s. 
So we're going to kind of go through a documentary of what it's like to get more old guys sailing and racing <laughs> where it's more of a social racing. Let that me make do sense? your hashtag. We'll, we'll promote you guys. Does that make sense? Yeah. More social racing? Yeah, exactly. We've all Wednesday si nights are great. Wednesday yeah. nights are fun. But what we've got to get over is the mentality of yeah. as we get older guys, we don't need to win every Wednesday night race. Put some kids on board. Get the next generation going. Part of the thing that people forget is some of the things like if I'm going to play a golf tournament in Cleveland, I put the golf cart key, you know, clubs in the back of my car. When I'm coming down to Cleveland, that's a simple process. But now we're in part, part of our story is going to be delivery. Yeah. Delivering a boat 100 miles away is not an easy chore. No. It, it takes some work. Logistics. So that's kind of the, the premise of it. And that's also part of the reason that the sailing doesn't have grown as. So what additional things have you learned with the program and where have you expanded to? Yeah, we're you know we're on year four with our partnership with the After School All Stars, a great national organization, and we started this year by going into the pool with them. A lot of kids had never been on a sailboat, didn't trust the dock, let alone the boat, let right. alone the sails, let alone the spinnaker. So we put them in the pool with life jackets, and we jumped in for two hours, and we swam around Ohio State pool, and then the next week we brought kayaks, and they flipped each other over and laughed and had a blast and. So we're trying to expand there. We're trying to expand to different cities and just continue to create opportunities. And that's what's important is we can't do it alone. So when brands come together to want to execute it, we want to be the source to help it help and, grow. And the connection here at this race is being on the on being on the Santa Cruz 70. Yeah. So yeah. that's an experience that most kids aren't going to get. No, no, it's an experience most us adults don't right. get. Right. How they doing on there? They coming up? Well, yeah, we're right. we're looking across. We'll take a little view out to the lake, and yeah, they're yeah. they're coming down. Yeah. I always have this fun. I'm at, we're at Bayview. I'm a Crescent guy. We have a little better view of the lake than I do here. You're looking at it from a river, but that's okay. That's all right. It's, it is what it is. But anyway, best of luck the rest of the summer, and uh, hopefully Thanks. appreciate Great the time. into you. You too. Always a pleasure. Thanks. We're on a dock here at Bayview talking with uh, Sailing World's editor, David Reed. David, uh, this is Sunday afternoon, and you're kind of, you saw the first boat come across. The conversation I want to have with you is the first one I've had with Sarah, who's also part of the program. It's just, it's you kind of came in like a freight train and it's just the, the social media stuff and it's it's been a wonderful event and this be, i think becomes the premier sailing event in detroit is that kind of what was it pointed to in that direction that's the goal and it, and it once was you know back when we our last event in 2010 uh and i was here for that as a, as a young and you know a good 14 years ago that this this whole even where we're standing here was the giant tent the parties were were up of course that i had never seen you know i've been around to a lot of places and and you know, that time we had nine or ten events as part of our circuit from L.A., New York, and this. And, and, and I personally always love coming to this one because of this, this sort of uncontrolled insanity. Like short season, the craziness on the, the intensity on the water, the intensity on land was something I had never seen before. That was quote, crazy. And the staff here was so welcoming to us. I'm like, well, how, how can we help you get this thing off the ground? And so uh, we had so many great years. And so after it ended, it was like, okay, well, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll come back someday. And uh, yeah, here we are. And so I think this is, in my opinion, the, the cool thing is, is you know, running these large events is a huge burden on yacht clubs, right? It takes the volunteer, the staff, the time, all that time and energy that they can be putting into their own infrastructure and their own events, their own junior programs, whatever it is. These, these events eat your time and man hours, right? And so it's, it's really great for a professional event team to come here and just take away the hassle and do all the front end race administration and just come and let the club host an event and, and, and welcome people who are not club members into the place. So, yeah, we come in like a freight train because this is what the event team does. You know, I'm on the media side, so I just come in and, um, you know, spread the love, spread the news, spread the spread the content. But, um, you know, the ladies behind the scene are, you know, hustling behind this thing all the time, you know, just pounding on, rent, you know, registrations and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a force that comes in. It also, I'm guessing, takes some homework prior to the event, getting involved with the fleets, having those conversations with people to get a little knowledge so that you have some understanding of what the local market is? Is yeah, that part yeah, of that? It's, it starts with calling all the, you know, every class has its spark plug and that's, you know, step one is find the spark plug. And there's so many here with the J35, the 120, the 111s. It was like, the stories were just coming in, right? This, and I wrote a little piece about this, and you know, in doing some of the research that, that Detroit had its first population increase in 66 years yep. you, know, you, you gained uh, 1800 uh whatever new citizens right and so to me it's like okay well detroit is on the rise this event now restarting 14 years later uh is hopefully the rise of of, a, of the growth kind of a, of detroit's best big summer sailing event and uh so hopefully we start here with bayview and 
bring in the effort of all the area clubs to, to hopefully we can make as, a, as an amazing event in Detroit. One of our sh our show regulars, Wally Cross, was also talking about weather. You had a little bit about that. You also had a weather report online that was part of that thing. So you're really treating this like it's a huge process. So yeah, well, that's, I mean, this is this is the whole point of like um, helping the sponsors to activate in a smart way that's like a direct communicate, direct with the competitors. And so for, for Hilly Anson, for them, to, to be here at the club and, and the same as, as all the clubs around the country and we talked about this before of being able to sort of be in the club sell merchandise in the club is amazing and it's just easy for people to come in and, and buy what they need when they need it you know we have you know like in St. Pete when all of a sudden you get a cold front and people think oh shoot I need bibs and, and hey, it's all right here so it's great for them to be able to do that but you know Mount Gay we had the rep here the other night for the cocktail um, contest and she was blown away and she, oh my god I, I'm gonna put some local my own local marketing money into this this is amazing these are the sailors like she recognizes that you know all the other spirits stuff that's out there the tequila and everything else they're sort of like starting to chip into rum you know and right. but, but Malke is so tied with us and and she understands that this is you know this is where her audience is at so um, but yeah coming here with Wally with quantum those guys came in last year and have just been taken higher and higher with the coaching, the debris, the weather. Um, so each sponsor, it's a sponsor, but partner really, really just brings their full energy to it. So between the, the event team and the energy of the sponsors, it just is like, whew, here we go. You know? We're both in the information business. And I asked this question, Oracle has had a great information bonanza with CLGP. There seems to be more information. Again, we'll talk about the weather programs. I mean, obviously everybody understands that weather is what it is. Peter Eisler had told us that he has a meteorological degree from you know from from Yale, where, yeah. he, where he graduated from. You never know anybody to know that, but we is those kinds of opportunities at the highest levels driving it downhill a little bit so that you have more information than people say. On the on the weather and the data. Yeah, side? just information. There's a lot of it. Um, and in fact, I just had a conversation with, with Gary Jobson, who's a columnist, and he was telling me uh, about, uh, he just did a Block Island race, which over in New England is basically, it's, a, it's an overnight race around Block Island and back into Connecticut. And um, there's a particular stretch of the race where you could, would call it the, the race, which is probably a lot like here at the Detroit River, where you got four knots of current. And um, he had never had the opportunity to uh, have on display in the instruments the, the current effect live. And so they were able to sort of you know, tack a job, you know, okay, cross the current line. Well, adverse current, here we go with that. So having that that data to him was, was amazing. And so, yeah, eventually the trickle down keeps going and the weather stuff, it's it's all live. You know, now we got uh, weather reporting stations all around the, gla the lakes and on the ocean and stuff. So uh, there's no reason to miss a giant persistent shift these days, I think. Yeah. Great relationship between Sailing World, obviously, and Helly Hansen. Uh, this is the first back-to-back -back Detroit this week, Chicago coming up. Yeah. Sarah finally gets a chance to sleep in her own bed, but for you, another another time on the road. You haven't done any back-to-backs, I don't think, in the series so far. Any thoughts? Back in the day, we did a lot of back-to-backs. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, back when we had 10, remember, it was like uh, we started with, if I, if I remember right, um, St. Pete, San Diego. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah right. Annapolis. Right. My mistake. LA. Chicago, Detroit, Toronto, San Francisco is a, so any of the, the the Great Lakes hoops are all really close. But yeah, so we've we've had this nice break, um, and I was not smart in my travel. I probably should have just stayed and gone to Cleveland for a day and done some sailing down there. But uh, yeah, go back to Rhode Island for a day, uh, wash the clothes, come back the next next day, and uh, do it all again in, in uh, Chicago. Now you can start appreciating professional athletes. You yeah, have to yeah. fly in for a tune <laughs> for a day, cut the grass, and I'll, I'll, you know if they go. Yeah, we had. Um, you know, interestingly enough, we have Francesca Klapchik speak, which was, um, you know, it's amazing. And I imagine those who, who missed, um, missed it here or on the live stream, it's absolutely worth going back and listening to her. She was amazing. And, and um, yeah, yeah, she was, she had left here in March, I was told. Yeah. Um, and has not seen her family, you know, not been home back to Utah and uh, came on a plane on Thursday night. And, um spent a night here, went home, and now she's back to uh, Barcelona and uh, flipping around next week. So, Is One Design Recreational Racing starting to make a comeback? We see it in our events in... Or does, this tend, to, does this tend to be more regional? I, uh, no, yes and no. I think, okay. and, I, and I'm always, I'm a, I'm a super positive guy because so I, I see it around me. And um, even at some of our own regatta series, I think you're seeing this great resurgence of the lightning classes and these, you know, older style classic one designs, definitely small boat sailing. The Mildred 15 has has really pushed that 
um, I, there's this pent up audience of people want to sell double hand dings with parents and children and co-ed and, and so to me that's just moving in the right direction that's just great energy of, of uh, small boat sailing is kind of where it's at stats right it's where we learn our skills and that gets more people in the sport in an easy way and eventually they'll trickle onto the big boats and um, and then people won't have any more complaints about not finding crew right last question what was the biggest surprise to you coming to Detroit what did you see that was really sort of in the back of your head what what shocked you Oh, good. Uh, yeah, good the, the surprise was like uh, coming in through the door. It was a bit of like deja vu um, coming down the park. I'm like, wow, nothing has changed. But then you, in this glory, this, this clubhouse is, is amazing. Um, so that was surprising how, how beautiful and new it is. Um, and not surprised at all by the enthusiasm. Again, we talked about it, like the short season here. Um, as I've walked around with my uh, cameras and stuff and interviewing people on a daily basis, the, the, the smiles are always there. They're happy. Um, so. The people on the boats are having a great time, and we've been lucky to have three great days of uh, racing with wind. There was none of this late, what are they, late, late Saint Stupid, right? So right. It's, it's all looked pretty smart so far this week, and uh, the first two days, I mean, yesterday with the sun, and uh, it was like being in the Caribbean, you know, without the waves. It was beautiful. Nice day. Well, appreciate you being here, and uh, what, a, what a great event. Yeah, it's good to be back. I'm, uh, hopefully, uh, I think we're locked into another, another year here, so this will be, I think, the, the start and people can accept that yeah yeah this event team knows how to run a great event so let's uh let's take it up another notch next year I want to thank david reed sarah renz jenny dolan and all the folks from holly hansen and certainly all the folks at bayview and uh, that made a part of this show it was kind of fun i think this becomes a premier event uh it was not only a social uh success it was a great uh, show on the water mixing uh, buoy racing with uh, sort of offshore racing kind of a fun uh, mixture of regatta and i think it uh, certainly got great reviews from uh from all those who participated so uh, we'll be down in uh, lake western lake erie next week bring you some action and uh the first time that uh, reliance our boat will race three guys that uh, turn 70 all within the same sort of same time frame will be uh enjoying it so hopefully you'll you'll stay tuned and we'll bring you that next week so for all the folks uh behind the scenes we want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll, we'll see you next week.